Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Carmen Siracillo! Wow, holy smokes, the energy, it's real. Wow, Sarasota, Florida, Friday night. We survived, we, we have the Indians on our side. I think you call them guardians. That's what they call them, they're not guard guardians, Indians, something like that. I'm from Cleveland, so we changed the name. But they did kick the Yankees' ass today, so we're happy about that. I am happy to be here. Look, um, did you pass all the free firewood on the way here tonight? Did you see it all? I, told, I bought firewood last year. This year, forget, I'm burning fences, I'm burning trees. Boats, I don't know, fiberglass burns. There was one in my backyard, I'll, I'll use that. Firewood, right? We survived the hurricane, thank God. I wouldn't know what to do anyway. I have no idea what to do, I'm from Cleveland. When they tell you to fill up that bathtub with water, I'm like, I don't, why? Is that to get clean before the first responders come? I have no idea. Do I have to wash myself? 30 years in Sarasota, Florida. I've been here 30 years. That's right, 30 years. Now we have two malls that no one goes to. My name's Carmen, by the way. I know that you've heard the name. Uh, did you expect a woman? Were people expecting a, a lady? Carmen, I, I was. It's just not a strong name. You know, my mother, Carmen, I said, Ma, why? Her first three dogs were Rocky, Johnny, Vinny. How did I become an old Spanish lady? That's what I wanted to know. Did I piss her off in the womb? What happened, Ma? I went to Italy and, uh, you know, this is where I thought, this is where I'm gonna shine, right? Cause I'm 100% Italian, but no. No, I'm not Italian, I'm Italian American. Real Italians are tall, they smoke. <laughs> and there's no one named Carmen. I heard this from a guy named Giuseppe. He goes, what's your name? I go, Carmen. He goes, no. He was so disappointed, it's like, Carmine, that's the name, Carmine, not Carmen, Carmine. I'm like, oh, like Carmen, like Carmine. That would be cool. If it was Carmine, that would be a cool name. Because what's your last name? I said, Suricillo? No. Cherichillo. Carmine Cherichillo. Stupido. But I'm not gonna argue with my mother, she's 80 years old, right? You don't wanna argue with old people. They got a pretty open schedule. You don't wanna get involved. I fear old people down here. That's why I've been dyeing my hair gray to match the rest of them. I don't wanna get in a beef with an old guy. You ever see these people, right? You get in a car accident with a guy that's 82 years old, he's driving a 76 LeSabre that he bought new. takes out three people in a Ford Focus, they die, he survives, how? He's driving a LeSabre, right? He's wearing a seatbelt, his disposable undergarment inflates. <laughs> Protecting the vital organs, he will live another day. He will pop up in Sam's Club. pushing a giant industrial cart the wrong way down the aisle. Don't say nothing to him. He's got an 80 pound box of Tide. You gotta have a lot of balls at 92 to think you're gonna outlive that much soap. That's all I gotta say. Is this the guy you wanna play with? The guy who, who thinks he's gonna be around in the future and you're not? Don't play with this guy. I won't even buy like a gallon of milk. I don't take that chance. A quart at a time, that's what I do. Old people are tough now, man. Old people are tough. They're tougher than the younger people, aren't they? Right, very tough. You hear them back there? The old people are tough and drunk and on pills and rowdy and don't listen to rules. That's old people, man. They're moving into Margaritaville. These are the people who want to keep ACDC in their life. 
And they're all jacked up on testosterone. You saw that, right? They're pushing testosterone so hard in this town. The billboards, have you seen the billboards for low T? I didn't know what the hell T was for. I'm, T, what is that? Testosterone, you need injections. Jack yourself up. I don't need any more injections. I think, you know, the old guys should just go away. Don't get your, you've been, you've been in hibernation for like 20 years and all of a sudden you're popping Viagra. Your wife don't need this shit. Chasing her around with your high T and your, everything on your body is soft except one part. You just need to just settle down, pal. It's ugly. Keep your, keep your clothes on. A lot of people don't want injections anymore. We're sick of getting shot with that needle, right folks? <sighs> but I've seen in this town, a lot of the old guys are replacing their testosterone with little white dogs. Have you seen this shit? <laughs> is this his ego in the form of a peek-a-poo? What the hell is this thing? It's a little barky bark that he puts out in front of him to kind of protect him like a bouncer. Like Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Remember Master Blaster in the back? The little dwarf guy chained to the big dude? That's what this thing is. Right, the old guy's like, I'm tired. I can't get it up no more. I don't know what to do. I need a peek -a -poo. That's what I need. A tiny ball of fluff that I can bring to the mall in a stroller. Put a raincoat on it, we're just dressing up a dog. This is, what the hell happened to men? This guy used to be a welder. What the hell has happened to men? Driving a Subaru, what's wrong with men? The dog's got an Auntie Anne's pretzel. I won't even buy those for myself. And pretzel nuggets and the wiener pretzel. Those are way too expensive. But the dog's got it all, Starbucks. I see these dogs all over the place. I see the old guys with the dog in the car, right? I thought we had a law about impaired driving, right? I can't drink and drive, but this guy has a free range Bichon on the dash. It's going back and forth, lane to lane, barking at everybody, right? Making a, a ruckus. We're just trying to not look at each other at the light, make sure, but this thing is like in my face. It's in the front of the guy's vision. He's trying to drive. I'm like, geez, I can't. You know, by the way, I can't stop watching that, you know? Maybe that guy's used to driving with a little Bichon or a, a, a Westie or whatever, the poodle. It's licking his face. I'm like, what's, why? Why would a dog, did he put peanut butter on his face? What is it? <laughs> Why would the dog, and I'm questioning this, right? I'm watching this, I'm like, you know, this guy's not really keeping in his lane. I don't know what's happening. Maybe they should pull him over, breathalyze him and the dog. I wanna know, is it crunchy, is it creamy? What's the dog licking off this man's face? I can't stop watching this. Yes, this man might not get into a car accident, but I'm gonna put my car into a telephone pole watching this. That's what happens when you have low T. That's what happens when you have low T. I think just moving to Sarasota will make you tired. <laughs> just coming here, right? We're like, oh man, I don't know what I can do anymore. I sure as hell am not going north of Fruitville. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. That's way the hell out there. We are just sinking into barco loungers and beach chairs and being rolled onto a path we can't even walk on the sand. They got a freaking boardwalk in case you're in a wheelchair to wheel your ass from the plane to the beach. You're just losing all muscle mass and complete atrophy from down here. It's all gone, right? That's what's happening. My brother-in-law just moved here. He's 45. He's like, I'm tired. I'm so tired. I go, I know, man, I know. I know what it is. He's like, it's gluten. I'm like, oh, geez. 
If you think it's gluten, you have low T. That's a problem. I'm serious, right there, right? Any type of gluten issue, or you think it's pesticides in the vegetables, or, I think it's steroids from the chicken. You got low T. <laughs> Something's wrong with you, right? I know what's wrong with him. He married my sister. That's what's wrong with him. <laughs> Trust me, you, if you saw her, you'd agree. She's a little Italian. She had a little bit of hair right here. <laughs> Tiny. She has high T. High T for a woman. For a woman, she has high T. High contagious tea that likes to suck other tea. She sucked all his tea. She's got a full blown Amish beard. That's what she has. Complete tea. Her whole face is tea. Whew. I'm married. I'm married. I, look, I think you can lose tea being married just by agreeing the shit. Just by getting along makes you lose tea just by watching Netflix with her. You know, you were watching like Discovering Gold, remember? Gold Expedition, just a show with a backhoe, just digging all day, just looking for gold. It's just most boring, they never find fucking gold, but you just watch all day, they're just digging, right? The women are like, what the fuck are you watching? It's interesting, they're gonna hit it any day. It's, episode, it's, it's season 13, episode 50. They're gonna hit it. They've been going to Alaska for 30 years. They're gonna hit it. We're, we're patient. And my wife's like, no, no, no. It's, we gotta watch it. Love After Lockup. Or 90 Day Fiance, or The Single Life, or gee, oh, Christ. I missed the whole thing with the gold now. My T is way down. <laughs> Completely lost a lot of my manhood watching that shit. I don't even know how to relate to my wife. Like, you know, I, I still, after 30 years, I ask her questions. I don't get a yes or a no, that's the problem. All I want is concrete answers, right? Yes or no, okay? Do you want coffee? If you're making it. <laughs> yes, I'm making it. That's why I'm asking you. Would you like some? If there's enough. I feel bad, I feel guilty, did I do something wrong? Am I forcing her to drink coffee? I just wanna know. I'm gonna put one more scoop if you want fucking coffee. That's all I wanna know. Christ, it's not that hard. It takes me a while to recover, I swear to God. It takes me a while to recover. Then I'll ask the next question. And this is a couple hours later, would you like to go out to eat? Well, I don't think I have anything to cook. So you wanna go out? <laughs> well, I think I have eggs. <laughs> no, don't do this to me. So we're staying home. I don't think I have enough eggs for both of us. Are we staying home and I'm watching you eat eggs or are we going out? What's happening? It's so hard. It's so, I just, I'm patient. I, I watch that Gold Channel, I know I have patience. We get to the restaurant and I'm trying to be nice. I know she needs her jacket because I don't want to come back out to get the fucking jacket. So I'm trying to stop a problem before it starts and I just go, do you want your jacket? It is always chilly in there. I know. You want the jacket? I kind of have a long sleeve on already. So no jacket, what's happening? This goes on. This goes on and on. You know, you're at the restaurant, you think it's over. I'm like, I gotta go to the bathroom before we leave. You gotta go? I have to go to the grocery store.
So you're gonna go to the bathroom at the grocery store? <laughs> well, I guess I can go tomorrow. I go, what, to the bathroom or to the grocery store? What are we talking about now? Of course, she's mad at me because when I get home, I go, you wanna have sex? She's like, no. No question on that one. Perfect answer. <laughs> Boom. I am dependent on my wife. I think most guys are, right? At this point, you have no choice once you're locked into this thing. <sighs> yeah. I'm just trying to stay independent a little bit, but I really believe I'm codependent. And I don't actually think she needs me, so I can't say codependent. I don't think she needs me, right? I don't. <laughs> Here's how I know. When she leaves the house, she never says goodbye. She never says goodbye. All she says is, you gonna be okay? <laughs> Have I been a problem before? What's happening? Am I gonna be okay? Cause you're scaring me now. I go, you have your wedding ring on? What are you doing? She goes, just don't call me. I need some time away from you. I go, I can't, you've been blocking my number. There's no way I can call you. <laughs> I know she loves me because when she left, I could smell cookies. I'm like, ah, yeah, I got her. She made cookies, right? right? 20 minutes looking for cookies. She didn't make cookies. She lit a Yankee candle, spicy oatmeal cookie. <laughs> I really thought I was gonna have cookies. I had a glass of milk in my hand. I thought I was gonna have cookies. Those candles smell like food. There's gonna be a lawsuit soon against Yankee Candle. Cause I really debated whether to actually take a bite of that thing or not. Yeah, the candles are always lit all over the house. I know we got three grand in candles for sure. Candles, Glade plugins, you have the Glade plugin everywhere. I can't charge my phone. I'm allowed to, not allowed to charge your phone. You want the room to get musty or do you want that fucking nine bars? I don't care if it smells good, like evergreen. It's confusing. Every room is confusing to me. I found a bounce dryer sheet in my pants. I was taking a leak with Mike and it came out. He thought it was a panty liner. Thirty years of being married, I think the answer really is, you know, if you want to stay together, you gotta to stay separated. <laughs> I think that's the answer. Right? Yeah. That is the answer. My wife's actually here. Yeah. She's in the car waiting. <laughs> it's enough distance. Just do, do do your little show, bring the check out, we'll do mobile deposit. That's how she does it. Stay separated. Give yourself some distance from each other, right? Right? Square footage, I think is the answer. Nice size house. Get a big house, right? Take out a jumbo mortgage if you have to. Get a big house with separate vanities and separate toilet rooms. And those fart fans. Make sure you have a fart fan. <laughs> Keep away from each other completely. Forget the tiny house movement. You know how many divorces that caused? The sustainability bullshit? Fuck the earth. <laughs> You're trying to stay married. I know there's a lot of romantic couples in here. I see it. I see it. I see them in the restaurants, you know. You see that romantic couple sitting on the same side of the table? Right? Like they're AGT judges. You ever see those two? Sitting on the one side, nobody on the other side, like they're on a, a double date with nobody. It's the weirdest thing, right? People are like, oh, how romantic. No, man, those people don't like each other. They don't want to make eye contact, don't you understand? They are sick of the view of each other. That's what's going on there. When me and my wife go to a restaurant, table for six. Every time I tell the hostess, table for six. 
they're coming, trust me. If I go to a hotel, I always get two double beds. And the guy's like, we got a king. I'm like, what are you, a marriage counselor? <laughs> two doubles, four pillows, pal, that's how we do it, 30 years. One for the roll in the hay, the other for the walk of the shame. That's how we do this. Wet dock, dry dock, that's how we do this. I know what I'm doing. That's how you stay married. Stay away from each other. Stay away. Yeah, there's a bunch of young guys here tonight, man. They don't know what the hell's going on. That's what you gotta tell these guys. Thank God you came. 2022, it's hard to be married, man. It's hard to be. 1922, probably easy as hell. Right? Because guys died at 48. That was easy. You got married, right? The priest's like, till death do you part. The guy's like, I can do that shit. What are you kidding me? Huh? I'm almost dead now. There's a plague in Europe. I got an abscess tooth. They can't fix that. I got a built in out. Don't you understand that? Hallmark don't make 50 year anniversary cards in 1922. Now everybody's healthy. Big mistake. Start smoking. That's all I'm saying. You start smoking. You don't want to be around too long. I'm sure that people after like 30 years, did I think I was gonna be married 30 years, 35, 40 years? When I was walking down that aisle, that long, really? If they would have said, oh look, when 2022 comes around, you're still gonna be with her. I'm like, what? Are you sure about this? Yeah, if you do have a long marriage, if you do have a long marriage, I think the best thing is low lighting in the house. Very low lighting. You know, no more than a 40 watt bulb in the house. You know what I mean? You don't want 60 watt. You don't want a direct full light contact on each other. Dimmer switches. You know, you're just trying to catch a glimpse of each other. Run through the hall, baby. Oh, that was hot, that was hot. <laughs> That's why they invented the three-way bulb. <laughs> to gradually prepare you for what your spouse actually looks like. It's like click, click, stop clicking, stop clicking. <laughs> Dial the click back one notch. There's my baby. So many divorces in the 80s because of track lighting. <laughs> Even kids were easier 100 years ago. You know, the kids today, a little spoiled, right? A little spoiled, a little spoiled because we created child labor laws. Real good idea, real good. Now they're 25 at home, no job. A hundred years ago, they were nine bringing home a check. How did we blow this? You never got any attitude from those little nine-year-olds. They were too tired from working. You never heard, Daddy, this isn't caramel macchiato. I order caramel macchiato. You never heard that because they were inside of a chimney sweeping where they belong. All you heard was the muffled cry of a kid going, Papa, when can I come out? You wanted to join the union, pal. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. My son's 22 and almost employed, huh? Almost employed. I say almost, almost. It counts, it counts. He's at college, right? He's at college, UF. Now here's the catch, it's for construction. I know, my whole family's in construction. I'm like, we could have told you this stuff for free? <laughs> Do you really have to go to college to know construction? I go, you could have went up to Cleveland, work for Uncle Frank. I don't wanna work for Uncle Frank, he's got a bad reputation. I go, you're gonna be in construction. <laughs> you're gonna have a bad reputation. A lot of people assume that our construction company in Cleveland was some type of a legal front 
for mob activity. You know, my uncle hated hearing that, so he had them killed. He wasn't gonna put up with that. <laughs> but I don't know, I think that you have to actually be in the field. If you're gonna work a blue collar job, you gotta know things. I don't think they're teaching all the classes at UF, like how to hold your breath in a porta potty. That's a big class. That's the most important class. July 3rd, three o'clock, you better know how to do that. That's the nastiest piece of Tupperware on earth if you've never been in one. No sink in there. Some people think that's a sink, not a sink. I'm just trying to help. That's the hardest piece of soap you've ever tried to lather up. Don't touch it. Don't make that mistake, man. Some of the guys have never been in porta potties, right? Right. Justin Bieber concert, something like that. Construction's not easy. It's not an easy gig. Not that many women in construction, right? Mm-hmm. We were interviewing a lady for our company. Very pretty. Look great in a hard hat. But she's flirting with all the guys. She's not gonna contribute nothing to the job. So we hired her. <laughs> Ends up suing me because I told her she was gonna have to drive heavy equipment. All I said was get on your back, ho. That's all, that's all I said. That's all. a small misunderstanding we got sued <laughs> woman judge look there should be more women in construction <laughs> I'm kidding I'm kidding I'm kidding like my wife will watch HGTV with me I'm like honey this is not construction right HGTV is for women right it's not for guys. We'll watch it. She's like, what are these guys doing? I go, they're putting insulation behind the drywall because a camera crew is watching them. Usually that doesn't happen. <laughs> See, that's an extra five grand in my pocket. That's where the bad reputation comes in. It would have been six, but the inspector, my uncle gets a cut. That's an extra thousand to him. So I lose a little bit on that. HGTV, if you watch, you're like, come on, man. Are these guys contractors? These two tall, pretty guys? These twins? That you can see their belt? I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Those are not, those are strippers. Those are Chippendales. There's no way that those two guys, they got cast, right? From a ladies' night somewhere. Chippendales. I can't blame the ladies for watching that, right? Because it's the guy's fault, it's our fault. You got married 30 years ago, your husband's like, oh yeah, we'll put a kitchen island and we'll put some new cupboards in, right? He didn't do nothing. <laughs> and so when the property brothers show up, he's in the corner like a little bit, I should have done it, baby, I know it. It's too late. <laughs> property brothers got her between them, walking her around, right? The music's on, a little stripper music, like bum, 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 bum. You see that Sub-Zero, baby, huh? You see the Sub-Zero, huh? Look up behind, look behind me. I put that kitchen island in there with that farmer sink. You see that shit, huh? Even I get a little horny watching the Property Brothers. None of this construction TV is real, if you watch it, right? None of it. You ever see the couple that builds together? <laughs> and never argues? <laughs> Honey, help me hang this sheet of drywall. Then we'll have a muffin. <laughs> El Casa Nueva is the Spanish channel. There's a show on there called El Casa Nueva. This new house where all the laborers are American. <laughs> You can't even get an American to work at Dunkin' Donuts for 17 bucks an hour, let alone dig a hole. 
it's tough to find people who work in construction. Everyone we interview looks like they come straight out of prison. You forget the usual questions. You just get down to, you ever kill anybody? <laughs> Guys like residential or commercial? <laughs> I do both. You can't drug test. You'll lose the whole crew. The only way a guy's gonna pass a drug test is if you grade him on the curve. <laughs> hey man, you're in the 60th percentile. Good job. <laughs> Get back on the crane, we need you today. What are you kidding me? <laughs> you're our best guy. <laughs> no, nah, there's no young people that wanna work in construction. You know that. The millennials aren't working in construction. Hard hats crush man buns. I don't know if you know about that. <laughs> I heard one young kid go, Alexa. <laughs> Dig. <laughs> we don't have Alexa to dig. We have Jose to dig. We have Manuel to dig. And now we have Dominic to dig. You see, I'm not a racist. I threw an Italian in there. My own son, but guess what? Dominic's not on my team. I never want Dominic on my digging team. Dominic's never held a shovel. He's never dug a hole. I'm taking Manuel every time. Dominic left my tools out in the sun because he thought they were gonna charge. No, I don't want Dominic. No, no Dominic with your little tattoo of a bottlenose dolphin, please. Stay away from our felons. We don't want you near the guys who just got out of the can who made their toothpick or there's tattoos with toothpicks and staples. You don't want to be with these guys. The, you know, the millennials and the felons are very, very similar. They're very similar. They're both wearing bracelets. One wears on the ankle, the other wears on the wrist. It's the same concept. The same concept. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not really in construction anymore. Thank God. It was hard. It was very difficult, you know. Today, two by fours are how much? Right? It's ridiculous, right? Two by fours, 600 bucks, something like that. $600 for a two by four, that's what I used to charge. Right? But it was like, $600? I'm like, yeah, ma'am, that's pine. <laughs> Southern yellow pine, it's very good wood. You just have to have the answers. They just keep asking, you know? It's just like, two by fours are expensive. They don't grow on trees. <laughs> you know what it costs for me to put one every 32 inches in your house? It's not cheap. <laughs> A lot of potential customers in here. I can feel it, you see that? <laughs> no one has any idea. That's why these houses are all blowing down. <laughs> we built it to code. No, you did it because you have no idea what code is. You said hurricane proof. We never said that. We said hurricane resistant. Okay, look at your contract. The governor told you, get the fuck out. Didn't he tell you to get out? Didn't he say, get in your Prius, get on I-75 and get the hell out of the state? Is my car built to code? No. Everything is going airborne. Do you wanna stay or not? No, we have no idea what, what the hell the house is made out of or what they do, right? Customers don't know. <sighs> you see, my mother wanted me to become a lawyer. <laughs> then you're in construction. Why, so I dress up and steal money from people? I could do it like this. I get to wear boots, right? If you could see my work boots, you'd be like, this guy's a hard worker. I'm serious, I'm serious, because if, <laughs> like today, I was involved today. I was carrying this huge tray of nachos to the guys. And <laughs> cheese all over the toes. You know how hard it is to get cheese off of leather? Took my dog like three hours to lick those babies clean. <laughs> yeah, look, here's the thing is that, you know, it's very difficult to meet women in construction. The way we dress, you know, not too good. I used to get up like two minutes before work, walk over to the hamper. <laughs> I'm 
kidding. I don't have a hamper. The clothes are on the floor. <laughs> Put those back on, right? Taking dates out in the El Camino. That's what we used to do. I didn't really get ready. You know, when you're working with guys, do you even need to shower, right? Guys don't even shower when they're bankers or lawyers, right? These guys don't shower. They're pretending. Do you shower, sir? How long are you in the shower? 20 minutes. Oh. Okay. Are you single? You're spending a lot of time with yourself. I'm just wondering if there's... You got loofah sponge in there? Or you burning Yankee candles? And you got an old school record player that takes a while to gear up and set the next one on top? And gonna be washing for a while. What? No guys take 20 minutes. I shower very fast, two minutes, right? I shower like I'm lifting weights. Yeah, I'll do chest and back today. That's all. <laughs> Let me do tries and thighs tomorrow. I don't want to wash everything every day. You know what I mean? It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I'm a guy. So I'm lucky that I found a woman. She loves me, right? She loves me. Thank God. Irish, I put my foot down when I got married to her because I said, look, we're Italian. I'm used to my mother making pasta every Sunday. The guys sit down first, and then the women serve them. Yeah. <laughs> you know what my wife said to me? Hey, turn the vacuum off. I can't hear you. Of course, I wasn't gonna say it loud. She's bigger than me. Everybody's bigger than me. <laughs> she almost killed me though the first time she made pasta for me. I had to run to my mother's eat the antipasta. <laughs> she understands construction. She knows if I come home late with beer on my breath, I was working. Working damn hard, right? I don't take any jobs where they don't let you drink on the job. I don't, I'm not gonna send two of my guys on the roof sober. Someone's gonna get hurt. They're not used to that. My whole family is in construction. We go back to Cleveland once a year. 20 trucks and vans outside of my grandma's house. It's like a union meeting. There's one guy there every year it's a little embarrassed because he doesn't work in the construction industry. He doesn't make as much money as we do. And I'm like, you know, it's my sister's husband, Tom. I'm like, Tom, you know, there's no shame in being a neurosurgeon. <laughs> Maybe you don't charge enough for your materials. You put a plate in some guy's head, forget steel, use aluminum. Who's gonna know? What, do you get one or two cuts out of the skull saw? Use that thing six or seven times. So what if he wakes up with a big black mark on his head? Huh? That's how we made our money. We skimped a little bit. Even on our own family. On our own family, we cheated. Uncle Tony died after Christmas a couple years ago. 94-year-old man. Isn't that amazing? Right? 94. That's a long time to keep somebody on the ghost payroll. That's a long time. <laughs> I mean, he's, he got three PPP loans. That's amazing. <laughs> and he's not even our best earner. <laughs> they wanted like 10 grand for the coffin. I'm like, what are you shitting me? It's made out of wood. What are they making that thing out of two by fours? That's insane. <laughs> I told my dad, I'm a skilled carpenter, I can do this. Let me build it. Right? I got some plywood, I got some from Mike in the garage. <laughs> my dad's like, come on, it's Uncle Tony. Forget the Formica. <laughs> That's 30 bucks a sheet. Just put some kitchen cupboard handles on that thing so we can lift it. What about the hearse? No, Bobby's got the El Camino for the weekend. <laughs> it's open casket, that's how we're gonna keep it. 
So yeah, I go back to Cleveland, go see everybody, right? Go hang out. They're all this big, like me. Like me, my son, thank God. I was worried about my kids. Thank God my son got bigger than me, right? But of course, when they get bigger than you, they want to challenge you. Now he wants to take on his dad. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to get involved in that because he's like 5'7". I'm like, no, there's no way. I want to mess with that. It's amazing to have him. He comes home, you know, from college. We don't see him. He spends a lot of time in the bathroom. My wife's like, what's going on? Is he constipated? I go, no, he's 22. Well, why is the door locked? I go, you touch the handle? That's why he's been in there forever. You gave him a heart attack. He had to start over. What the hell you think he's doing? Same thing I'm doing in the other bathroom because I've been married 30 years. Because after 30 years, you know, my wife treats my dick like it's the dishes. It's just another fucking chore we gotta do today. Dinner, dishes, dick. That's how it is. It's just a very boring list of chores. And you know, if you think dick is number three, I'm out of my mind. Right, it's number nine or 10. If there's a list, I'd be happy. It'd be, it'd be amazing to see dick with a smiley emoji. It's not happening. There is no list. If there was, I'd try to move it back up to its rightful position. I would even do the laundry. So there's an empty slot. She would just fill that with laundry or sleep or something else. You know what I mean? It's tough when you get married. I'm gonna make sure the young guys know this stuff. Yeah. Dick time, it's not easy to get, but She cheats at dick time, by the way. She's like, I saw you naked in the bathroom. And? I'm counting that. I go, what? <laughs> yes, that was lovemaking for us. That was, I didn't even know you looked at it. You could at least told me, you could have waved from a distance. You could have said, hey, nice dick. Something like that. Let me know that you know it exists. That's all I want to know. She's always busy. There's just never enough time. You know, when we do have a little lovemaking time, it's, it's very formal. She's like, don't move. It's like an MRI, stop breathing. I'm trying not to breathe. I had no idea it was gonna take this long. I would have never started this. I'm like, oh, why don't you keep up that sexy talk? That's gonna keep me hard for hours with you wearing a bandana, you got a fan blowing on you. Why are we already cleaning up? There's bleach three feet away from me. Just shut up. No time for you. Really? Because I will watch her pet and stroke the dog for hours after telling me there was no time for your dick. Really? It's the same motion. It's the same amount of energy. It's the same amount of calories. I counted it. I, I looked it up, baby. I don't care if you pretend it's a dog or a puppy. It'll do the same things a dog will do. It'll beg, it'll stay, it'll come. It'll do all the things a dog will do. I hate that dog. It looks at me while I'm standing behind the couch with my pants down to my ankles trying to push the dog out. Get the dick in. I'm taking yoga. Am I getting too close to you, ma'am? I don't care who touches it. You know what I'm saying? I don't care who touches it at this point. I'm sweating. I'm going through menopause a little bit here. Yeah. I know she loves me. I know she loves me because I cut my thumb and she was very concerned. She came out with like peroxide and bandages and I thought, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cut my fucking dick. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> you guys have been a great crowd. Thank you for having me, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you, folks. Thank you.
Carmen Sarasilla. 